can't stop Googling myself. I can't stop Googling myself. I can't stop typing my name. Every night it's the same. I can't stop Googling myself. I can't stop Googling myself. My eyes are glued to the screen. All right, welcome to episode number seven. And this is going to be by far our shortest episode in this series from chapter 14. And this episode is going to cover human chromosomes. So let's get started. Okay, now, human chromosomes, remember, a chromosome is made out of DNA and protein. And remember that protein is in the form of a histone. So you got your nucleosomes, your histones, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you put those two together. That's called chromatin. All right, now, each diploid cell, remember, diploid, symbol for diploid is 2N. And what that means is that you have two of each type of chromosome. So remember, the human genome has three billion base pairs. So how did you get six? You got some from your mommy, and you got some from your daddy. You got maternal chromosomes, and you have paternal. Now, out of our chromosomes... We're pretty sure that only about 2% actually codes for something. The rest of it is just, you can kind of consider it junk DNA. But we are finding out that what we consider to be junk DNA has more and more functions. The more we learn about the genome, we're starting to learn some of its secrets. And we're starting to find out that more of our, what we would consider, remember, introns, more of your introns has information needed than we thought. Okay, so this number may change over your lifetime. Now, the average gene is 3,000 base pairs. Okay, so 3,000 A's and T's, C's and G's are going to make it up. Now, remember, three bases make up a codon. So if you do your math, therefore, the average gene is going to have 1,000 amino acids in it. So these are very, very long molecules okay now i want you to look down here at this picture what this picture is showing you where some of the genes that are involved in alzheimer's disease are found all right this this appears to be a polygenic trait that takes many gene pairs to make this disease show up so some of these key uh, genes are found on chromosome number one chromosome 14 excuse me chromosome 19 and chromosome 21 okay and it looks to us that probably like this, these alleles right in here seem to be the most important. Now, I do want to remind you about some chromosome structures. You see where these little dents are right here? Typically where they have these little lines. These little lines, those represent the centromere. Okay? And then now we just design, we have a top part of the chromosome, and now we have a lower part of the chromosome. So what we call the P-arm that's the top, okay? And then what we call the Q arm, that's going to be the bottom part, okay? And you'll notice that these guys have these banding patterns that look very similar to barcodes, all right? And so these help us determine how we pair up the homologous pairs, all right? So, and look, kind of strangely is that all of these are kind of on a Q arm. I don't know if there's any significance to that, but kind of a, kind of an interesting... Um, uh, observation right there. Okay, so what I want you to remember out of this stuff is remember we are diploid. We get two of each chromosome, one from mom, one from dad. The average protein is 3,000 base pairs long. The longest here is 2 million base pairs. That's one long gene. But remember with your chromosomes, you have a centromere somewhere on the chromosome, and then above the centromere is going to be your P arm, and below the centromere is going to be your Q arm. All right, so until our next episode, we're going to catch you on that flip side. <laughs>